And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old man shall dream dreams. Your young man shall see visions. And also on my man servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we open up uh, the Yes Global Prayer Line Ministry this morning, I humble myself in humble submission and subjection under the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, that I may speak a word to your people today that will penetrate the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls, that will call us all to repentance, that will have us to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? I pray for the backslider that he's calling to himself, saying, come to me. And the sinner who may listen to this prayer recording today, if you're listening, the Lord is drawing you to himself, saying, come to me. We pray, Lord, in a time of uncertainty in this world, that the people of God will stand up and be the head in which we are called to be in this world with the gospel message and the spirit of Jesus Christ with us, making impact in this world, changing lives, setting the captives free, bringing great deliverance, and salvation to a dying world, I pray. May this word return not void. It shall accomplish that which the Lord set it out to do today. I pray that the Holy Ghost fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost break out all over this world with signs and wonders, with souls, a prostate, crying out to the Lord, seeking the face of the Lord in the name of Jesus, being empowered and endowed to do greater for the kingdom of heaven, knowing that the time that we're in is my prayer in Jesus' name, I pray that you give me a double portion of the anointing, the oil flowing from heaven, the oil flowing from heaven, that this word, that it penetrates the hearts. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. This morning, I'm going to be coming out of, there is, let's see, I have one, two, three, uh, four, five, six chapters. I'm going to be reading out of this morning um, the chapters or short passages of scriptures in 
uh, the chapters, and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be speaking on today. We have been talking about this year's theme for the whole year is obtaining the promises and blessings of the Lord through prayer, unwavering faith, fasting, and obedience. The word I have for you today, just with this theme in mind, is do not neglect the promise of the Holy Spirit. Do not neglect the promise of the Holy Spirit. We are in pursuit of the power and authority from on high. And as we open up in the passages of scriptures, I will be reading out of King James and the New King James interchangeably this morning. We are going to be reading out of John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39, John 14, verse 15 through 16, verse 26, and then 27, John chapter 20, verse 20 through 22, Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5 and then 8, Acts chapter 2 and 38, and then concluding in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3 through 7. Let us read the word of the Lord. John chapter 7, starting at verse 7, and it reads, In the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me, and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying said of truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee, hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? I read just a little bit further there for you. Verse 43, it says, so there was division among the people because of him. Let us now read, turning to John chapter 14, verse 15. And if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father to the Father, and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. 
the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Verse 26 and 27, but the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Turning to John now, John chapter 20, verse 20 and 22, John chapter 20, 20 to 22. Let us just read verse 19 to get the fullness of this passage. Then the same day at evening being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Now, Turning to Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 4 through 5, and then 8. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, not many days from now, verse 8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses of me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let everyone be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Turning now, flipping the pages, stick with me here. The Lord has a word. For us, Ephesians, 
chapter 4, starting at verse 3 through 7. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as we were called in one hope of your calling, there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. I want you to just think on this thought to just ponder on are you neglecting the Holy Spirit? Are you neglecting the Holy Spirit? My message is simple today to speak on the promise of the Holy Spirit, the gift from the Father left for us, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the third deity in the Trinity, left here on earth for us, walking around, omnipresent, he is omnipotent, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, is everywhere. He is in China. He is in Japan. He's over in Korea working wonders, signs and wonders. He's over in Africa. He's over in New Zealand. By God. He's over in Jamaica, even in Haiti with all this disruption, this uh disruption going on. He's he's over in Sudan. He he's over in Ukraine. He's over in Israel. And he's over in Jerusalem. He he's in Egypt even. Roaming around. He's here in America. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. I'm going deep on you. It's everywhere. You cannot control the Holy Spirit. You cannot contain the Holy Spirit. You cannot mock the Holy Spirit because he will have you between stuck stupid Ah, exposing yourself, talking about the Holy Spirit, but not even having an encounter with the Holy Spirit, being gifted to speak, being gifted to perform, being gifted to sing, being gifted to mesmerize, but not even having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. So this passage of scripture, this promise that we seem to be neglecting in the body of Jesus Christ, the church body, which is the head, neglecting the promise of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going to do this for you before I leave. He had to remind his disciples so many times, even when they were shut up in fear. He had to remind them by breathing on them the Holy Spirit to get prepared 
And then he tells them again, I want you to go and tarry for the Holy Spirit. You cannot practice, teach somebody to practice in tongues because that is not the spirit of Jesus Christ. You cannot teach somebody that the Holy Spirit is only operating over here because that's not the Holy Spirit. That's not the true Holy Spirit. You cannot tell somebody uh, uh, that's that's not even uh, maybe having rags and riches uh, 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 and may not be in the place of the temple and tell them that the Holy Spirit has not come upon them and they received the power of the Holy Spirit and that they received the gift of the Holy Spirit I'm going to tell you why. Because my first impact lesson here on the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is, it is a promise. A promise of necessity for every believer. And he must flow continually in our lives. To live for Christ. My second impact lesson here. The believer must thirst. Jesus cried out. And he said. "Ah, If you thirst. He called them to thirst. You must thirst. For the promise. Of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit. And this is what Jesus thirst for. When he was up on the cross, he was separated from God the Father, his spirit, and he said, I thirst. He was thirsting for the spirit that he was separated from. And Jesus is letting us know that we must thirst for the Holy Ghost. We must thirst for the promise of the Holy Ghost. Uh, We must thirst for the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a thirst that cannot be quenched with that of water. It is only through the living waters that flow from heaven. The living waters that flow from heaven. My God, you can try to mock the Holy Spirit, but if you mock the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will expose you. And this is why uh, the promise, we must have this promise that we can be watchful and that we can be discerners of the truth and what's right and what's wrong, that we can be discerners of cult churches, cultivism churches, preaching doctrines, Doctrines of demons carrying on about with not any spirit to cast out a devil. My God, casting out devils in the name of Baal and Shabab and God Ichabod written over the church. We must come subject to the power of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. I'm teaching on this morning about the promise to not neglect. The promise of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Lord said. And I knew he was sending a word to me because he told me to behave. That he had a word. So I had to behave myself to see what the Father wanted to be spoken of. Nobody really wants to hear about the promise of the Holy Ghost. Nobody really wants the Holy, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit moving about in their church. Because what that means is that everyone has to come subject to the Holy, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And we, with all this knowledge, 
Bible scholars know that when the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit shows up, it brings about conviction. And he comes with signs and wonders. And everyone must bow to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, when he begins to roam and move because it is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. We must come subject. And when you have to come subject, the Lord reveals things out that needs to come in subjection. And this is why many people today just talk about the Holy Spirit. Just read about the Holy Spirit and don't even have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I was reminded I'm just being led by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you what the Lord is leading me to. I was reminded of the movie Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump is in. And you know the Holy Ghost will talk to you. The Holy Ghost will talk to you. Uh, and, he, and he talks to us on a level, an intellectual level, in a simplicity level that we understand. And I heard the Spirit say yesterday, stupid is as stupid does. Stupid is as stupid does. Are you stuck stupid today? Stupid is as stupid does. That means that you don't have sense enough to even do what's right when you see what to do. What's right. And, and that causes us, the Holy Spirit, somebody's not going to like this. Because it's going to shake the kingdom of hell today. Yes, the Lord says stupid is as stupid does. The Holy Ghost, he doesn't want you to play with him. He doesn't want you to perform. He wants you to come subject unto him. To come subject unto him. And to come subject unto the Holy Ghost. To the spirit of Jesus Christ. Peter stood up and said, be baptized and repent. You must be baptized in repentance. You must have a repentant heart. And then you have to turn from your sin. That's repentance. Repentance says, my God, I'm turning to God the Father, not to a man. You praying to a man. You, you praying to a man. You repenting to a man. The Lord said, you making a man. God, stupid is as stupid does. The Holy Ghost calls you into subjection. It calls you into a heart of repentance. And then if you have that heart of repentance, you're doing a 360 degree turn. From that sin. It's not a practice. You don't practice. Say I'm repenting. And you go back and do the sin. Because I'm covered by the blood. And I, I have an access. So I'm going to sin. And keep, I will keep on doing this. I'm going to keep on doing what I do. Because I've got an advocate. The Lord say not so. I don't care. I don't care. Shaking the kingdom of hell today. 
This is the word of God. I'm ending with these talking points, and then I will send out the rest. I don't care who hears the word of God today. You don't try to muzzle the word of God because then he'll bring something up on you. He'll bring a sickness up on you. He'll bring a judgment up on you. He'll bring his justice up on you. That only he, his hand can remove. I'm speaking truth here. We're in a world today where people would rather hear music blasted, all kind of satanic music blasted, all kind of televisions blasted, cussing, games, cheering on at games, blasted. But you start talking about the word of God, and it shakes the kingdom of heaven. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man or woman soweth, that shall they also reap. It's the word of God. God is calling us all to repentance. When Jesus cried out and said, Thirst, thirst, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me. The Holy Ghost, I'm going in, is the living waters flowing from heaven's fountain. It is the living waters flowing from heaven's fountain. And if the living waters it's flowing just like living waters flowing. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Waters flowing. Fountains of waters flowing. This is the Holy Ghost. Let me see if I can just get through this. You must receive. Someone say receive. You must receive the promise of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit continually. That's why it's not operating in churches. That's why you don't have it. You must receive. And when true repentance comes, you're turning from your sin. You are a candidate for the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And just because you are baptized in the Holy Ghost one time, it does not mean that you need a continual filling of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit brings division, and there's division that has even come from this message today. The Holy Spirit brings division. We open up in John chapter 7. After Jesus said, if anyone thirst, come to me. And he was speaking of the Holy Spirit. It brought about division. And the Holy Spirit does bring about division. It separates those who wants to be subject to the Spirit and separate out those that do not want to be subject to the Spirit. Because the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, requires you to be in subjection, in submission to him. But it is a gift. Are you neglecting the promise of the Holy Ghost? The Holy Spirit is the third deity in the Trinity. It is the Spirit of Jesus Christ that he prayed. He said, I'm going to pray to the Father and that he will send you the promise left here on earth that's for every believer. It doesn't even matter where you are in your Christian walk. If you are 
a babe just coming in, or you are a seasoned saint, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Jesus is left here on earth for us. The promise of the Holy Spirit, it's a commandment. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. It's a commandment for every believer to receive and be filled with the Spirit. He says it in John chapter 14. He says it in Acts. He commanded them. And he's commanding us today. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. And he is a helper. He is a comforter. And he is a helper. The promise of the Holy Spirit is truth only. It's truth. There is no falseness, lies in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of peace. Each time he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. He was speaking to them, letting them know, the comforter, my Holy Spirit is going to bring you peace. Peace. The Holy Spirit is the breath of Jesus Christ breathed on us today. How many of you need the breath of Jesus to be breathed on you today? It's the breath of Jesus breathed on us. That's why it said in Joel, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. The Holy Spirit does not have division of racism. It does not have that. The, the Holy Spirit is not prejudice. And then the Holy Spirit is the gift of grace. We read in Ephesians, if you look at the in-depth of this word in Ephesians 4, 3 to 7. The Holy Spirit is the gift of grace given to us from Christ, sent from God the Father. Somebody's not going to even get that. The Holy Spirit is not the baptism of water. It is the baptism of of the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. After you, the believer, you receive, you believe, and you receive. It requires you to believe. So you must believe, and then you must receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives power, and at the, only after the believer receives it, the Holy Spirit comes up on you, comes inside of you, and endows you. It gives you power and authority to be a witness globally without racial Divide. My last impact lesson here left today. I did say I was going to shake the kingdom of hell. But so be it.
my last impact lesson here. Just lift your hands to Jesus. Yes, Lord. There are many people that are receiving this word right now. Lift your hands to Jesus. You, if you're in your home, lift your hands. You may be on your job trying to listen on your lunch break to the word of God. The Holy Spirit is available now, the Lord says. You may be in your sick room in the hospital. You may even be in your church. You may be gathered in a group fellowship. The Lord says the Holy Spirit is available now. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit, it calls all of us for the Holy Spirit to indwell in you. It calls all of us to another level. This is the word the Lord gave to me to give today. May this word be edified and glorified today. May the promise of the Holy Spirit, may it be poured out today to those that will believe and receive it today, the Lord said. It's, it's yours. We ask, we receive. We ask, we believe, we receive. The Lord has said, it's yours today, right where you are. He said, it's yours. I've given you things that you need for the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for this word. And I pray that we do not neglect the promise of the Holy Spirit today. It is the promise and the gift left for us, for every believer, which helps us to live victoriously here in this world, to help us not to walk away from the faith. It helps us. So, Lord, we pray that if we have turned our backs on the spirit that you left for us, Lord, that we repent and turn to you today in submission. In submission. In subjection. Yes, Lord. The Lord said, if you cannot receive a continual filling of the Holy Spirit in your home, and you think you only have to be at church to receive it. You have not experienced. You have not had an encounter with the Holy Ghost. That's just what the Lord said. If you think that you have to be at church only to experience the power, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you have not had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. He said, come to him. Come to him. Come to him now, he's saying. And if you find yourself in dwellings and churches that are not preaching the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit on a continual basis, you might want to consider where you're worshiping at today. Because this is what the church is lacking. The Holy Spirit, that is the bond of peace. The Holy Spirit that brings about true unity and the church. The Holy Spirit that equips us and empowers us to be a witness. I pray in Jesus' name. 
If you have been offended by this word today, I say to you, peace be unto you, my brothers and sisters, peace be unto you, but it is the word of God. I do not preach what I do not do myself. I do not teach what I do not do myself. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. Oh, good Lord.